I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, today our topic as you see in the title is the Saudi uh, so-called royal, royal prince. You know many of you maybe maybe very few are Arab and you will know that those people are not royal and they have nothing to do with the prince or princess. But the funny is that we are in a time where there is somebody, he is a brave somehow to say, we as Muslims screwed up. In other way, he is saying, Muhammad is an idiot. But he don't dare to say that directly. So what he claim, that he started a project is going to be finished in two years. I don't know how for how long he started the project. And this project is to take away any hadith which is unproven between two bracket. And he said, and this is a Muslim website, Bin Salman blames unproven hadith for dividing Muslims. So what is dividing the Muslims is unproven hadith. <laughs> I'm going to open my Skype. And today we are going to discuss only the proven hadith. And you will see how every single Muslim will make a poo, -poo With no discrimination. From only Proven hadith. Let me open my Skype. So as long as proven hadith is the problem, what about the proven one? The one you Muslims call it authentic, sahih. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, this guy, he is not going to delete the hadith. No, he cannot. They will kill him. But he is going to... The Erdogan, he tried that before him, by the way. And it failed. You know, people, people are laughing. Muslims are laughing. Uh, but I want to show you a proven hadith, proving to us that all those Mohammedan, they are suffering from kind of uh, illusionate uh, drugs. Uh, there is something wrong. Read with me this following hadith. <laughs> oh boy. What a stupid religion. Let us duct tape the prophet. Well, this is a proven hadith. This is a proven hadith. 
And this proven hadith saying, don't write hadith. <laughs> I mean, this is a religion which is the followers are so smart and so genius. The guy, he just said to you, don't write any hadith. They write down, the prophet said, don't write down any hadith. <laughs> and after that, they continue writing tens of thousands of hadith. Like the prophet said, don't write any hadith, okay? Abdul, he write, prophet said, the brother and sisters, we should not try and die in any hadith, okay? Aman Rabbi Aman. You idiot, he just told you don't write down anything he say, only Quran. Okay, the Prophet said don't write anything, only Quran. Why you are writing it down? So the proven hadith says don't write. <laughs> The Muslims right. <laughs> Unbelievable. What the heck is that? That is so good. And you know, the Muslims, the Mohammedans, the man made religion, the man worshippers, the black stone kissers. They are so desperate to fix their stupidity of their prophet you know like when you have somebody he's speaking your name and he is so stupid and what do you do there are three options he did not mean that oh the prophet when he said that he refuted you he said the sun set and goes under the throne and this is proven to be true he refuted me So, he will take away any hadith, make Muhammad look like a mule. Well, all of them, what, what about the Quran? <laughs> the horrible, noble Quran. Now, the Muslims, they call it noble, noble Quran. I don't know what is noble about it. And any believing women, she liked to open her legs to the Prophet for him a license only. The noble Quran. Look at the noble. And any belief in women, she liked to give herself to the prophet to boom boom her. Takbir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Open your legs to the prophet so he might do boom boom to you. And this is only privilege for the prophet. From the name of Allah to your vagina directly. You know, there's a hadith. I don't know what, what the crown prince he will say about it. It says it's written in the name of every vagina, the, not, the, the ones, it's written, sorry, written in the every vagina, the names of the one will if it. Now, if you are a prostitute, don't keep looking, okay? I know you will have like a yellow pages there, all right? But written in every vagina, the name will if it, yes, brother. A woman, she called the Muslim Sheikh in Egypt, and she asked him, I became over 30, you know, in the Middle East, you are 30, or you are really old, if you don't get married. And I'm afraid I'm not going to get married, you know. The Sheikh, he says to her, my daughter, don't worry. The Prophet, he says, مَكْتُوبٌ عَلَى كُلِّ فَرْجٍ اسْمُ نَاكِحِهِ It's written on every vagina, the one who will if it. So don't worry, if it's written for you, you will be ifed. <laughs> she is worrying she is not going to be ifed. <laughs> so today, I said to myself, you know what, forget about the unproven hadith. Who is a brave Muslim? He dare to call me and talk about the brave, sorry, the, the proven hadith. Who wanna talk about it? Let us take one of the proven hadith. Little bit of them. 
the prophet, he was really a scientist. And there's a video actually made by a Muslim from Hamas, uh, and the other one from Egypt. Uh, he said, the Catholic Church, they hired two certain, certain tests to examine this hadith. And they said to themselves, this is a very accurate hadith. If we can prove it to be wrong, we destroy Islam. And the brothers and sisters, they found that it's true. And not only that, according to the video, the guy he claimed that uh, what is called uh, it's a it's a it's a German company. Uh, they they now they are making a, a, a cure. They made a cure from the medicine <laughs> on the fly. <laughs> buyer buyer. The company is called Buyer. Actually, I can't find you the video. <laughs> Why you are buying medicine, vaccine for stuff? If you have the cure, just eat a fly. <laughs> oh boy, you can search the video on YouTube, you know. The prophet said, if a house of a fly falls in the drink of any one of you, he should dip it, dip it, dip it, dip it, dip it, dip it in the drink and take it out, for one of the wings has a disease and the other has a cure. Look how Allah, he created things. One wing is carrying disease, the other wing is carrying the cure. They are not the same, they are like, it's the same, it's the same, like, hold on, you know what, I'm going to do certain, 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 certain study. I see some of you laughing. Now, come on, shame on you. Do you want to be like Muhammad one day? There's a guy, and this is a true story. There's a guy, he made fun of me because the way I look like. He woke up in the morning, he looked like me. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I was laughing at him, like, what the heck, what happened to you? Is that me? He said, no. What? He said, look at the mirror. He said, I don't have a mirror. He said, okay, open the camera of your phone. He looked in the phone, he looked like me. You see how Allah, he punish him for making fun? So do you wanna Allah punish you and make you like Muhammad, stupid? Uh, so the prophet who discovered a certain, 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 certain discovery, which nobody can really beat, you know, this is uh, proven to be very true, okay? Very, very true. I'm telling you, it's very true. What's wrong with you? You people are really weird. Honestly, you are weird. Do I need to swear by Allah? Okay, hold on. I'm going now to do in the front of you some study. We had a fly. She volunteered to join us. Uh, hello, Mrs. Fly. The fly. Listen, those people, they don't understand. So I'm going to translate. She said, don't worry. Allah, he sent Quran to Muhammad in a sound of a bell. And then Muhammad, he wrote it in Arabic. Like, what the heck? Hey, fly, we come to ask you about the medicine in the top of your wings, and now you are bringing us another problem. The prophet, he received a sound of a bell. What are you telling me? Okay, hold on. This is too much for me to translate. I will start from the first dip. So the first two seconds of zipping, she was saying, zip it out. Muhammad is a stupid idiot, he say as he speak. And if you really try to expose him, Allah will curse you to be a fly. Oh. So are you saying to me, like, Allah, he cursed you and he made you a fly? What you used to be before in the previous uh, life? Oh, you used to be a fly. Okay. So he cursed you and he made you a fly? Yes. So nothing changed. Oh. 
Okay, she is saying in the Quran, there's verses saying that Allah will abrogate verses and make you forget it and he will make same like it. And this is exactly what he did with me. So he abrogated me by cursing me. I was a fly, I become a fly. Look, we have a Muslim is trying to call us. <clears throat> Mute you too, please. Hello. Hello. Hello, CP. Yes, my friend, you are here. Yeah. I hear you. Why are you always afraid to talk to me? I'm afraid to talk to you. Well, I am talking to you yes. right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. In between, you will cut and you run must, away. You must be very strong, my friend. Why your voice is so far? Are you speaking yes. from under the table? Yes. Okay, speak from the top okay. of the table. Don't worry, you, are, you will be fine. Okay. Okay, so what do you think about your prophet saying that uh, he received Quran as a sound of a bell? And then the Quran become in Arabic. What do you think? I'm asking you, where is your salvation agreement in the Bible? In the Bible? I'm afraid I'm to show me you, that. What is the salvation agreement in the Bible? Don't worry about my salvation now. Worry about your fly. So your prophet is a fly I'm... specialist. He said the fly, and the, I just spoke to the fly. I don't know if you heard the interview. She said, that, she said, why you don't understand me if the prophet himself has received Quran as a sound of a bell? So I'm asking you now, please. Muhammad he received Quran. Muhammad received Quran as a sound of a bell. How he See, made the how he made the how he made the Quran in Arabic? You, you are again afraid you are trying to rotate. See these flies. I don't bombs, understand you. I speak know, speak know, close to the microphone. Come come from underneath of the table. Get close to the microphone. I don't hear you. The fact is that you don't have salvation agreement in the Bible at all. So blah, 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 I don't understand you. Get close to the microphone. You do not have salvation agreement in the Bible at all. I don't have salvation in the Bible? Yes, you don't have. Okay, and what's your problem with that? Do you have salvation, so why, do you have salvation in the Quran? Why are you preaching falsehood? Okay, Bible to okay. What, if, what if I show you that your stupid prophet says that we Christians, we have salvation in the Bible? What do you do? You don't have. No, okay, what, I show you, what if I show you? You want to challenge me? Even then, I will not. Do, 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 do you want to challenge me? I'm asking you. Do you want me to challenge me to show you that in the Bible the Christians are saved? What is the where is the salvation? I'm challenging you. You want to challenge me or not? I am challenging you right here in front of your channel. Okay, so in front of my channel, you are not in the front now. And so I'm asking you: Did your Quran says that the Christians, if they follow the Bible? And they are granted to go to 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 heaven, and they are following the Bible. Even there is no such thing, because in the surah first surah Fatiha, it clearly says, and all the Muslims in all the rakat of namaz okay. ask Allah. Show, show me. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I'm asking you. Uh, if if we don't, if there is no such a thing. So why do you strip the Quran, keep calling us Ahlul Kitab, people of the book? It used to call Ahlul Kitab because once God has given you book. No, not used to. Until read? now, until now, you, you, don't, you don't, don't, don't lie, don't, Abdul, don't lie. It's in front of you. Until yes. now, you keep calling us people of yes. the book. You people it have says, that book in the Quran, Abdul, it says, Ya Ahlul Kitab, Ya Ahlul Kitab, Ya Ahlul Kitab. Ya Ahlul Kitab, Ya Ahlul Kitab, Ya Ahlul Kitab, come tomorrow. Ya Ahlul Kitab, do you want to show you more? So you're stupid Muhammad, you're stupid Muhammad, he keep there calling no us. There is no salvation in Ahlul Kitab. So listen, 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 okay, do you have a book? Are you Ahlul Kitab? Do you have a book? It was once. What you was? Okay, here we go. Listen, guys, it was, it was once, 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 but it shows in the Quran a billion times, and I'm asking you, are you from the people of the book? Are you as a Muslim from the people of the book? Uh, what do you mean, are you Muslim from the people of the book? The Quran called Christians and Jews people of the book. So I'm asking you, do the Quran call you from the people of the book? 
as i said to you that quran call you people of the book but it was once a book was there once upon a time no this is a, this is when we are worshiping jesus so stop being a fool no this is not okay look this is uh, the okay. book look, abdul uh, abdul here here here, here your opinion doesn't count you have to give me proof so can you show me a proof from the Quran saying that this is was once upon the time he called them people of the book or this is in the time of Muhammad when he was speaking to them, he keeps saying to them, people of the book. See, if the book was perfect, then there was no need for Muhammad to come at all. Stupid idiot. But this is not the question. Listen carefully. Chapter, let, let me, let me, let me go. Let us, let us cut the crap. Chapter 20, ch chapter 29, verse number 46. Can you read for us? Read in isolation. Uh, Verse 46. I want you to read it. And why your voice is so far, my friend? Why? Why? What happened? Are you drinking camel urine? Okay, that will not make. Okay, read for me. Read. I don't. You see, don't force me to hang up on you. Get close to the microphone so I can hear you. And then I want you verse to read 46. chapter twenty-nine, verse number forty-six. Go ahead. It says, do not argue with the people of the book unless gracefully, you except so, with those so you who stupid, went So you stupid, you said to me, this is, was one of the time. This is, a yes, I said this is before, he said. this is before, this is not uh, in the time of the prophet. But as you see here, he is saying, don't argue with the people of the scriptures. So we have a scriptures. Do you have a scriptures? The scripture was once upon them, now you don't, don't tell me once upon them. If it was once upon them, why you call us people of the book? Hold on, so you are now. saying to me, so you are saying to me, there's a guy, he used to have hair, then he lost his hair. And we keep calling him the guy with the long hair, but he is bald now. Are you stupid or what? You people have no scripture. So. Okay, if we have no scriptures, did your prophet he take an oath in the scriptures? Hmm? Hmm? Did your prophet took an oath on the scriptures? Well, I do not know, maybe. Do, do not know, maybe. This is, here we go. This is the hadith. It says that you're a prophet. He put his hand over the Torah, and he swear by the Torah, and he says, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. And you just said, if, that, if, the, if the Bible is still correct, there's no need for a prophet Muhammad to come. Everybody heard you. Did you say that? Did you make this purple yes. or not? You just said this I purple. I still say that, okay. and I myself, can, okay. I myself can swear on Torah. But this does not mean that Torah which you are preaching is correct. Okay, but are you saying now? I that, so, are you, are, are, so are you I agreeing? Are you agreeing? Are you agreeing that the Torah in the time of Muhammad was perfect, correct? No. So why he swear by it? Swearing by Torah means the Torah which was originally sent, not that time. Which... He put his hand on it. He hold the yes. Torah. The, he hold the Torah. The book. The Jews. He asked no, the yes. Jews. Shut up. He asked the Jews, yes, he said to him, Abu, Abu, I will let the flight bite you, huh? Listen, listen. He said to the Jews, yes, give me, he said to the me. Jews, he said to the Jews, read it, read it in front of you. He said to the Jews, bring me the Torah. They brought the Torah for him, the Torah they have in that time. And they gave him a book. He put his hand, actually he took the Torah, he took the cushion, showing too much respect to the Torah, and he put the Torah in the top of it, and then he put hand in, his hand on it, and he says, I swear by thee and the one who sent thee. So this is a physical book between his hand at that time. And you just said, if the book was correct, there's no need for Muhammad to come. So, there, you know, there is one hadith also, where Muhammad has said, even if Moses was alive, he had to follow me, he cannot follow Torah. Do you believe this hadith as well? This is the proof that your prophet is a stupid. Because how he said, I believe in thee. He's not as and, stupid. Hold on, hold on. How he said, he, how he said, I believe in thee, which means he is following thee. <laughs> which means he's following he Moses. Follow, hold he on, never follow hold on. The book sent to Moses. And you are saying to me that your prophet, he says, if Moses was here, he will follow me. But he said, yes. I follow I follow thee, Moses. He, Muhammad never followed Musa. And Musa okay, hold on. Okay, let, me, let, me, let me show everybody that you are a potato. You do not know your religion. Do you must know? Do you know the, the fasting of Ashura? Okay. Do you know the fasting Moses of Ashura? Huh? Do you know the fasting of Ashura? No, I do not, although it is recommended. You never heard of Ashura before? I... It was following Moses when he was fasting it, no. or he was following who? No, no, Prophet 
the muslims who were keeping fast on that single day muhammad said them not to fast on single day because it will resemble moses and his followers listen, so listen carefully have to fast on listen, two listen days. carefully did your god allah say to muhammad fast ashura I do not know about that, but people used to why fast. Every, so why every, every, why every day did call, call me? He says to me, I do not know. I, you are the Muslim who is trying to call me to correct me, supposedly. I'm asking you, when Muhammad, he followed the fasting of Ashura, he was following who? Allah? Or he was following a bunch of Jews? No, it was a Nafil, nafil Ibadah which he was following. Wait, what, what? Was I don't understand command. anything. I, I, don't, I stand zero. What you say again? What? It was nafil, nafil, means was, was not what? obligatory, was what? not obligatory, nafil ibadah. Uh, the, this, the question is, when he followed fasting of Ashura, he was following the Jews or who was following the order of Allah? No, he was not following Jews. So he was following, show me the order of Allah then. It was neither order of Allah as well. Well, the hadith in front of you shown that you are a big fat liar like your prophet. Your prophet, he never heard of this day before. He never heard of this fasting. Read the hadith. He was going to the city of Medina, and then he, he found that the Jews are observing a fast on the day of Ashura, which is at the 10th of Muharram, the month of Muharram. The prophet asked, what is that? So you, you see, you stupid prophet never heard of it before. They told him, this is the day when Moses became victorious over the Pharaoh. <laughs> so the prophet says, you know what? <laughs> we follow Moses too. I'm a Jew too. Let us follow Moses. It's in front of you. Why are you lying? Okay, so you are thinking that by no, following... Apologize. Moses, apologize. You're a prophet. You You're a prophet. is not a prophet. He never heard of Ashura. So he never you heard. He never heard before. He never heard of the, before of what Moses did that he crossed the sea. So your prophet is a potato. He's a liar. First time he heard about it, it was from a Jew, not from Allah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. No, you are not. Well, the Jews, okay, read the hadith. Well, okay, read, the, listen, listen. Listen. read the hadith. Read the hadith and explain it to us. I'm listening. Jews are circulating wrong Read the hadith, no and, this is, and this is a sahih hadith, this is a proven hadith. So please read the hadith and explain. Go ahead. What I am saying that Jews were circulating fake fairy tales. Fake, 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 fairy tale. so, you're, so are you saying your prophet he, he is following a fairy tale now? Are you insulting oh, your prophet? Followed, okay, hold on. Hold on, Mr. Fairy Tale. Did your prophet follow fairy tale of the Jews or he is following? I asked you, I asked you in front of everybody, when Muhammad, when Muhammad, he was fasting Ashura, he was following the Jews or Allah. He never fasted you said, Ashura. He you said, day, he shut up, for shut up, let me talk, I will let you talk. You said, you okay. said, you said that he is following Allah. I said to you, can you show me where Allah, he ordered him? You failed. Number two, I, sh I said to you, can you read the hadith in front of you? You failed. Number three. Your prophet never heard about this Ashura ever before. He was asking them, what is that? They said to him, this is the day Moses was victorious. So I'm asking you, why Muhammad do not know what happened to Moses and yet he claimed to be a prophet and you said that Moses will follow him? He know everything what happened to Moses and that too correctly, unlike the Jewish story fairy tale which was you know, circulating. Want, want you, can you open your camera for me? I want to I want to see how your head is working now. You look like a lizard. I'm asking you why he never heard of this day before and why he accept to fast a day from a person he is a Jew and he is not a prophet. What if the Jew is lying? What if this day is not a tr true day? You're a prophet. He take whatever the Jews they say. So I challenge you to open your camera and give me the answer because now you look like a lizard and you're trying to change your color, this, the, the band in the background. What is your background now? Are you a Muslim? He fasted for two days. Fast for two days. I'm asking you why he is following the Jews. You said to me that if Moses was here, he will follow Muhammad. I said, fine. So why Muhammad is following a, just a Jew? He's not even, this guy is not even Moses. He's not even the guy what who cleaned, he, he cleaned the bathroom for Moses. So I'm asking you, Muhammad, he was, Muhammad was walking down street, like always, wearing his skirt. He saw a Jew. The Jew, he, is, uh, he said to Muhammad, Shalom, Muhammad, Shalom. So Muhammad, he says, Shalom, you look tired. He says, yeah, I'm fasting today. He said, what, 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 what the heck? What, is, what does that mean? He said, yeah, today we are fasting. It's called the uh, Ashura. Uh, Muhammad, he said, what? What is Ashura? He said to him, oh, this is the day where Moses, our prophet, became victorious over Pharaoh. 
Your prophet right away, he says, you know what? We are nearer to Moses than they, so fast as they. So Muhammad, he is starting a rules of religion based in a Jew. He saw him in the street. So this Ashura will make your religions right? Zim, 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 Zim. I want an answer. Why Muhammad? You, you did lie to me. You said Muhammad, he received it from Allah. The hadith, the hadith in the front of you says he received it from a Jew. His name is Jack Shalom. We used to go hunting together. Why Muhammad is taking his religion from Jack Shalom? He never took. What? He never took religion from Jews. Here we go. Your religion is taken from a Jew. You are established fasting for the Muslim, taken from a Jew. Okay, but even if he took, did you it say, was changed did by you just say, Did you just say, okay, Allah but? Hold on. Did you, just, did you just say, okay, yes. but? Did you just say, okay, but? Are you butting when me it, now? Listen, Abdul, you, you just said, okay. You just said, okay, so you agreed, okay, Mr. Mr. Okay, you just agreed that your prophet taking his religion from the Jews, so he is not taking a religion order from Allah. You are a liar, your prophet is a fraud. What if the, what if the, okay, what is the Jews are decent people according to Quran? These are not decent people. They are not decent people. So why your prophet taking his religion from people who they are not decent people? Prophet never took. And even it's in if front you of you, it's, uh, Abdul, potato. It's in the front of it, you. He established fasting. He never heard of it. He, just because a Jew, he told him, this is the day Moses was, he, you know, he was victorious over Pharaoh. He did not even say Moses ordered us to, to it, fast it. Did the guy, did the guy, he says, Moses ordered us to fast it? No, just because Moses, he was victorious. We are fasting this day. So you're a prophet. He copy what the Jews do, and he do it as... It was changed now. Huh? Now we have to fast for two days, you know. One day we cannot fast. This is not the you question, Abdul. I'm asking you. Yes. Why your prophet is taking his you religion not from a Jew? To speak, yes. Why you your prophet? Why your prophet taking his religion from Jews? You are afraid as usual. Huh? You are afraid as usual. You are not allowing me to answer. No, because you are, no, I'm, I'm asking you to answer. You, you keep skipping the why he is taking uh -huh. his order. You said to me, he took it from Allah. I said to you, okay, let us go back to zero. Can you show me where your prophet he received the order to fast Ashura, order from Allah? For fasting for Ashura, there is no order from Allah. So, then so why you lie to me? I ask you, did he take it from the Jews or from Allah? You said from Allah. So we have to fast for two days and so it is not question. Focus with me, Abdul. I ask you, I ask you, do Muhammad take obligated. his religion about fasting Ashura from Allah or from the Jews? You said from Allah. So I'm asking you now, and then you repeated the same answer, but did you change? Now you are saying he did not receive it from Allah. Okay, fasting on Ashura is not obligatory. This is not what the question. He is a prophet. He is a prophet of God. He should not follow a Jew, and he should follow order from God. Did his God order him to fast that day? Regarding this, taking from now, will you let me two minute answer? Or will we into internal? You are complaining. You are you are in the delivery room, and the baby is not coming out because your anus is so small. Don't worry. Allah will insert. 99 dragons inside your anus, as the Quran says. But this is not our topic now, so focus with me. The guy, he is a Jew. Muhammad is not a Jew. Muhammad walking down the street, he saw a Jew. The Jew is fasting. Muhammad asked him, why you are fasting? He said, because this is the day Moses was victorious. Muhammad, he loved it. So he said, you know what? We are more close to Moses than them. So Muhammad trying to follow the Jews, trying to become a Jew. But he was not accepted by the Jews. So I'm asking you for the last time, please. Why Muhammad taking his religion from a Jew, walking down the street, not from Allah? Okay. <clears throat> so even if he took it from Jew, and then he made modification. Okay. It is neither obligatory no, it is practice. Okay. Some people so look, look what you just not. said. Look what you just said. Yeah. Everybody, everybody heard you. Everybody heard you. Everybody heard you. You said even if he took it from the Jews, later he made a modification. So Muhammad, he modificated his religion. <laughs> 
because he have none. You cannot modificate what Allah he told you. You follow God. If God says you fast, you fast. If God says don't fast, you don't fast. If God says you do this, you do this. If God says don't do that, you don't do that. So you just say, yes, he followed the Jews, okay? But later he do modification. Are you saying to me that Muhammad is the person who do modification to Islam as he wish? See, this Ashura fasting is neither order nor stop. Doesn't, doesn't matter, doesn't, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. matter. The, the, you are the one who agree. You are the one who agree. You are the one who agree, not me. You are the one who agree that you're a prophet. Okay, listen, listen. You, you Muslim, you, you Muslim, I'm going to help you. You Muslims, you believe that the, the Jews, they worship a guy whose name is Uzair, correct? You are changing the topic and diverting no, the topic. Not. We are not. I'm showing you that you Muhammadan, you are just trying to be a Jew. You are trying to be a Jew. Listen. Okay. Who is the one who taught Muhammad the Tawheed? You are changing the topic of salvation. Okay, we go back to the topic, then here we go. So now explain to me how your prophet he modificate and he changed the fasting, which is a Jew, his God a Jew, he told him well, you should fast this day, so Muhammad he obey. Muhammad he followed the Jews. He, Muhammad he was their puppy. Otherwise, you explain to me how in the world his God Allah never informed him about the day which Moses was victorious over Pharaoh. He learned that first time from a Jew. And why he is following a fasting of a Jew? Maybe he's a scam. Maybe he's a liar. Pharaoh, Moses victorious, what not yours? You didn't tell him Pharaoh. This is another question. Your prophet never heard of the Pharaoh story before, as you see, otherwise he will not How ask. Abdul, if he is a person yes. who is a prophet, then he should Pharaoh know, he should know, he should know that this is the most important, Abdul, 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 listen, too much courage. Abdul, hey, listen, I will give uh, listen, if Muhammad he knew, do Muhammad he knew about that day before this, uh, this moment? The Pharaoh story is there in the Quran and it is perfectly well, unlike Bible. Muhammad, after that, he started writing about it. As you see, he never heard of this before. The stories in Bible and Quran are different. Bible, 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 I'm asking you, why Muhammad, he did not know the day of fasting of Ashura, how come Allah did not inform him? And because if it's not from Allah, then Muhammad, he should not take it. Are you saying to me that Muhammad was because following the Jews blindly? Was the order of Ashura given to the Jews from Allah or Muhammad, he follows just the Jews who is fasting Ashura? Because it is not obligatory, the order is not given from it's not, Allah. It's not because it's not what? It is not obligated to fast on Ashura. Do you know this? Who said it's not obligated? If you fast in Ashura, it's going to erase the sin of one year. There is no sin on anyone. What no sin? Do, do you want me to show you the reference that if you fast the day of Ashura, your sin for the previous year will be forgiven? I know it, but in Islam, there is no sin to be it's forgiven. Another question, Abdul, potato. Listen, I'm losing my patience with you. I don't know how big your diary is, but it's so big. Listen. Is it, true? Is, it is, it true? is 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 it true that your prophet claimed if you fast Ashura, it erase your previous sin for one year? Onion James, you are rotating round, 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 and I'm not asking coming you. to the top. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Is it true that if you fast Ashura, according to your prophet, that will erase the sin for a year, pass away? There is no sin on anyone to be erased. What? There is no sin on anyone to be erased. I'm not asking you about the sin, you idiot. I'm asking you, listen carefully. Is it true that if you, if you fast Ashura, your sin is forgiven for the previous year, 365 days before that day? Is it true? It is there. This is not the question. Listen, that. is it a true? Is it a true? Is it a true? Is it a yes. true that if you fast the day of Ashura, your sin is forgiven for one year before that day? Yes, it is true. Okay, so, but we just learned that you're a prophet. He just learned that about Ashura from a Jew. So where he learned that this day will make your sin forgiven for the year to come and the year in the past. 
Where did he get this? He just heard, he just learned that from the Jew. All the sayings of Prophet Muhammad was approved by Allah. Okay, Muhammad, who is a proven by Allah, he never heard of this from Allah. So how he claim that if you fast this day, suddenly, suddenly he became this day is very important. Suddenly this day is the most important. I mean, and what kind of religion if you fast one day, that will erase your sin to the year to come and the year to pass? Well, how stupid is that? So look what he said. That if you do, if you do fast that day, and this is Sahih, but he just learned this day about it from a Jew. No, it was modified. One day is fasting is not done. Okay. Do you have really two days. What? Is that an answer? What is the answer? I'm asking you. He just learned. We show you the hadith. He just learned about Ashura from a Jewish guy. Wonderful. Okay, so now, you want to how, how this day, suddenly, how this day, the Jewish guy did not even say to him, if you fast this day, is going to erase your sin for the previous year. <laughs> so Muhammad is adding a story now. So, so I'm asking you, asking you, where Muhammad he got that, that he, 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 Ashura, you said, okay, from the Jews. You agreed finally. Thank you. So now Muhammad, he learned about Ashura from the Jews. But he just claimed that if you fast one day of Ashura, your previous year of sin doesn't matter from a child molestation. Actually, child molestation is not in Islam. So all the crimes you do for the 365 days, just because you fast one day in Ashura, your sin is forgiven. You don't get that in Ramadan. Where Muhammad? So you want to ask a question on salvation at all? So, by so, so, listen, listen Abdul, I want you to call your sheikh. Let him call me. I have no time for kids. Let us see this guy. There is more customers. He did not answer. <laughs> Any Muhammadan? Who is a smart Muhammad? He can explain the stupidity of Muhammad. <laughs> so the crown prince, he is going to fix the stupidity of his prophet. He just learned about Ashura from a Jew. He just heard of, a, of it a second ago. And suddenly, Ashura is a day will erase a sin. And look how filthy this teaching is. Look how dangerous it is. Because now I can do everything the whole year. And then what I will do, I will fast Ashura. You see how easy? You can do go rape, you can go kill, you can go steal. You can do all kind of filthy things in your life. Just fast the day of Ashura. That's it. It erases your sin. What a nice discount from Allah. Just because I did not eat for eight hours. Guys, I'm going to fast Ashura from now on. And I will spend my life gambling for con for connection. I will uh, do robbery. I will uh, rob a bank. And uh, I will uh, rape women. And uh, I will uh, kill people. And then I will fast the day of Ashura. What a nice discount. What a nice religion. Very comfortable. Hey Putin, Muhammad Vladimir Putin, I got a solution for your crimes in Ukraine. Just fast Ashura, buddy. Yeah. All those people who died there, psh, it's gone. Ashura, eight hours of fasting. You know, can't you fast drinking 
vodka for eight hours you put in come on put in the guy he just learned about it from a jew there is a there's a lady she's texting me now and she said i want a video calling you well, why you want a video calling me Don't you see I get scared from videos? Somebody keep those females away from me. Are you handsome like Prophet Muhammad? He look at the moon. He look at the Prophet. He look at the moon. He look at the Prophet. He look at the moon. He look at the Prophet. And for sure the Prophet is more handsome. Oh boy. Do we have any Mohammedan? Anyone? Hmm. Let us see here. We have somebody want to talk to us. Hello? 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 Must be ultimate fault, maybe. Hello? <laughs> Any Mohammedan? Yesterday we have a Muhammad and we ask him about why the Prophet all his stories is about sex, penises, vagina. He said uh, the Prophet he have his reasons to you know you know you, you know you not not alive at that time you know what. Let us give them a chance again. One more time. If not, I will block you. Last opportunity. Okay, look like we're not answer. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. Are you there? All right. That doesn't block you. The so called the Crown Prince. I don't know who made you prince except the British intelligent. All of you, Imarat. You know, those people, they used to have their own goat. You know, we are, we live in the desert. Then the, Her Majesty, the Queen of England, decided to make kingdoms and princes and sheikhs. So she made Imarat family sheikhs. And she made those, they made those Al Saud, they made them a king just to control the oil. And they gave them the support, same as Kuwait. And now the scam of those people, you know, they are trying to. You know, I'm not against the guy, by the way. I mean, he is a fraud, yes. He is a criminal, yes. But this is how all Middle Eastern leaders. But this guy is a change in Islam, trying to make it something moderate. You can argue, says, I support that. But trust me, that will not work, really. He can force, he can change Islam inside Saudi Arabia because anyone who oppose him, he will cut his head. So, but... He can give a freedom to the people to, and the freedom is limited for sure. Like you can be, you can be dancing, you can be drinking, you can wear a bikini as he is doing right now, uh, but you cannot speak against him. They cannot. Uh, 
so he, you know, obviously he is changing in Saudi Arabia to something way better than Islam, even if it's dancing and etc., which is not really will make a human being a better human being. I mean, dancing is not a problem, uh, but uh, the value, the ethic of the nation should be changed. And the ethic of the nation is based on Islam until now, which means there's no ethic, zero ethic. You know, when this guy, he says, we are going to change the hadith, or we are going to take all the hadith, which is bad. What he will do with something in the Quran it says, if a woman, she got divorced three times, she have to go and sleep with a new man. And then after he F her, she can go back to him. How that work? You know what I mean? Are we going to change that? This is a chapter two in the Quran. And nobody can explain how you can fix that. Is that an ethical religion? Like for some reason, YouTube have a problem. The chat stopped. I'm not sure why. Do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? I don't know if even YouTube is running, but let us see. <sighs> I think it's running, but there's a problem in YouTube, maybe. No. Maybe. Yeah. It is running. If a man, he divorced his wife, she have to go and sleep with a new guy. So the new guy, he will enjoy this woman, and then she can go to the previous guy. How we can fix that? Is that an ethic of religion? You, you divorce your wife, and, and why Muhammad, if he is against divorcing, the Muslim, they will say to you, oh, you know what, because there's people who abu abuse divorce, but you are abusing the women now. You are forcing the women who have no guilt. She is not the one who divorced the guy. It was her husband. You throw her out in the road, and now the poor woman, she want to go back to her previous husband because of the kids mostly, not because he is a good guy. You are forcing her to sleep with a new guy to go back to the previous husband. And that will make a Muslim woman, a divorced woman is like a bicycle. Anyone take a ride. So, okay, you did ride this woman now three times. And now you let this bicycle, you cannot take her back. Somebody else have to ride her. This is ethical. Excuse my language, ladies. I like to make it simple, clear. Uh, your friend, she wanna call about Islam. What your what her name? What your name? What your friend name? I'm afraid that this is the one she tried to call me and I blocked her because I blocked, actually I called her. She didn't answer. I mean, why in the world anyone wanna call me to see what the problem of Islam? Don't you see? Watch my videos. You don't even need to call me. All of this is not a problem. The man, he can beat you, it's not a problem. How in the world, any woman, she can accept such a garbage cult? In the USA, if you beat a dog, you go to jail. A dog, a little, a little dog, you beat him, you go to jail. 
Once I call the police to move the dog, his majesty, they want to move. He's in front of my uh, uh, screen door in the apartment. So in order to open the door, I have to push him and he start, you know, going aggressive. I can beat him, but, uh, you know, I cannot, this is an animal, stupid animal. Why do you want to beat him? I call the police. And then the police, they start talking to him. Habibi, Mr. Dog, can you please come with us? Come, we have cookies. Come on, let us give you cookies. Okay, okay, okay. And then I was able to get out. A Muslim man, he treat his wife less than a dog. Beat them. And then the Muhammadan, they try to fix it. They say, no, no, the Quran says, first you do this. There's no first. Second, you do this. There's no second. Third, you do this. Uh, and it, it says lightly. Where lightly? You know what? If you show me the word lightly, I will shave my 27 mile beard. Where is the lightly? You have not shown that I have balls? Too much, too much. Why you want to see my balls? Are you okay, my friend? This Abdul, he want to see my balls. My friend, even your prophet, you do not know what balls for. According to your stupid prophet, that the sperm is coming from the backbone of the man. Are you going to fix that too? And this is Quran. So why you are talking about my balls? Show respect. The Muhammadan, they tried to fix it. The lions of the man. Lions of the man. Yeah, tried to fix it, Abdul. Huh? Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. So according to your stupid prophet, the sperm of the man is coming from his backbone, not from his testicles. And uh, testicles, according to Quran, they are just a decoration. And like the balls, you put them in a Christmas tree, you know? You can put light on them, by the way, they will look nicer. And uh, according to the stupid Muhammad, women, they have a sperm coming from their ribs. So if you are married and your wife, she gets naked in front of you, I have a bad news for you. You might think she have a breast. They are not a breast. Those are testicles. Those are breast testicles. If you don't believe me, I can show you the reference. Here we go. I will go, and I will not. This is not a Christian prince understanding. This is your understanding. Chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7. Eh, let us go here. This is Ibn Kathir, peace be upon him. May Allah bless his testicles if you have any. And this is your God explaining to us how he made the babies. Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, which is referring to her chest. <laughs> and the crown prince is going to fix the hadith. What you would do with the Quran? And by the way, I'm really disappointed of those women. They lie to us, they say they have a breast. It turned to be, it's not a breast. It is testicles. And not only that, obviously their testicles is way bigger than yours. If you don't believe me, look at your wife. And now men, they will hide their testicles because obviously their wife, their testicles is way bigger. Ah. Sheikh Shamsi, Shamsi is a Sheikh. <laughs> Shamsi is a Sheikh. Shamsi. <laughs> this guy is a drug dealer. Sheikh <laughs> uh, Shamsi. Bring him here. You do not need to go to Indonesia, you potato. Let him make call, let, him, let this, you call him Sheikh. <laughs> Is that the one who accused Ali Dawa that he is molesting women? 
and he is the one who accused Mimi Hijab that he is stealing money? Is that the Sheikh you are talking about? <laughs> um, he rejected Al Bukhari because it came later after Muhammad. But the Quran written later after Muhammad. When Muhammad died, there was no Quran. And until now, they don't have a single copy of the Quran of Muhammad, not even, even the Quran of Uthman. This is why if you open the Quran they have today, it says that this Quran is according to recitation of Hafs, according to Asim, which means his stepfather, who was sleeping with his mother, and this guy is very well known. Both of them, they are a scam. According to, according to, according to, according to, according to, according to. The reason it is according to to those because there's no book. It's called Quran. It was recitation. And Hafs came more than 200 years after Muhammad. So if they are rejecting the Bukhari for it came after Muhammad long after, well, the Quran came long after Muhammad too. Jafar Sadiq, Jafar Sadiq, this guy is a Shia. Who cares what they accept, my friend? All of those people who, you see this garbage thing is like, I accept that, I accept that. This is a, those people, they don't count. Actually, this is a clear sign that those Muhammadan, they are trying to hide the shame of Muhammad, duct tape. And this is why this guy, he called himself a crown prince. He is trying to duct tape his religion. Muhammad, he's, le he's leaking from every place. So what they do, they put some cotton in his anus. Oh. Now the leak is coming from his belly bomb. We put some cotton from his belly bomb. Oh, now he's leaking from his ears. We put some cotton in his ears. Now, oh, it's leaking now from his nose. We put cotton in his nose, and then he is leaking from his mouth. So we need to shut up his mouth. Muhammad is leaking. Who wanna prove me wrong? As you heard the Indian guy, the prophet was, he took, he took Ashura from the Jews and he did modification. <laughs> In the beginning, it was from Allah. Look, look how the, how, how, look how the talk changed. In the beginning, he says, he took it from Allah. He, not, not from the Jews. Then he agreed, it's from the Jews. But he did modification. <laughs> and then suddenly Ashura can make you of erase your sin for the year and the previous year and the year to come. Isn't that amazing? How beautiful. Do we have any brave Muhammadan? Yesterday we played this cartoon, you know the cartoon about Zakir Naik, it have this little music like sexy and you know it. And then YouTube start playing advertising on top of my video, what make me upset. So I had to cut it off and take that part so they can leave us alone. So. YouTube don't allow me to have advertising over my or collect donation here, as you see, because simply I speak against Islam. YouTube, all those forms, they are in bed with Muhammad, all of them. You will not find one Muhammadan, even the one who speak about terrorism, support terrorism, they take the privilege or let us say the ability for him to collect donation. For us, they can take it away. So it's, it is very obvious that YouTube side with the, with the devil Muhammad, but it's okay. For us, we are here to expose Islam, no matter, you know, people who want to support us, they can support us and they knew how. Do we have any Muhammad in here? Anyone? Okay, forget about anyone, any, any half one. Any half one. Well, you know, if you think about it, you see, you need to understand. You watch Fox News. What do you think? You are watching American TV station, correct? Many of you do not know that half of the stations is owned by the Muslims. Same as CNN. Same as Sky News. If you go right now, search for Sky News. Sky News. Who is the owner? 50% to Emirat, 50% to Murdoch. 
Jews plus Muslims. And obviously this Jewish guy, he don't care what they say there as much he cared to make money so the Muslim control even what those stations they say. So you live in England, you think you are watching even the BBC. Do you know the BBC? Do you know that the BBC, since the beginning until, uh, until, until the zero started, it was sponsored 100% by Saudi Arabia? The British government, they never paid a penny just to control the voice of the BBC. No, my friends, Sky News Australia, Sky News England, Sky News is the same garbage. Go right now to Sky News uh, uh, Arabic, and you will see how, how the business is working. They are praising Putin. Those people, they have, you know, in Arabic, Emirat want to support Putin. In English, they don't dare to do so. They are the one who control the station. This is why we are the only source, independent source, to share the truth, especially when it's come to be about religion. Otherwise, truth about even war can be total fabrication from here or there. Like, you might find the news, fake news coming from Ukraine, made by Ukrainian. You know, that's normal to happen in wartime. And it is going to happen from the enemy too, the, you know, Russian. So, don't take news, but we see millions of people leaving their houses. Obviously, they are not going on a journey for barbecue. Obviously, their houses has been burned. And, you know, sooner or later, the whole community in the world, they can go and visit this country, and they will see how much destruction is there. Do we have any Mohammedan? Somebody saying fake news is a trinity. Well, you have to prove it. We prove here every day that your prophet is a mentally ill person. Can you call me and prove to me that the Trinity is fake? Do you dare? We are not a Jazeera TV who will host only our friends or we will make a propaganda and, you know, just to use you. Uh, come and speak your mind. CP fake news is Trinity. I can show you the Trinity from your stupid Quran. Actually, everything in Islam is based in number three. Let us let us do an experiment in the front of your ass. I can't say your eyes because obviously you see the word from your anus. Excuse my language, guys. This is how I try to make them see who they are. Put them in their place, and their place is the anus location. Here you will see, I will type the word three times. Look, look, look at this experiment. Unbelievable. Three times. I did not search for anything. Just three times okay what we will find like what the heck everything in islam is based on number three three time he washed his hand three times raised his mouth three raised his mouth three time his nose which is disgusting three time and he washed his face three times. Threat is fake news, okay? I am, my name is Ali Dawa. And my wife, she is going to feed me grape during the debate. Because I'm a spoiled Abdul. Give me grape, give me grape, okay? Give, mm, 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 mm. I saw your hand. Your hand is very white. Is it haram to show your hand? Okay, give me more grape. I'm Ali Dawa. I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm the good boy. Where are you, Mr. Fake News? Everything in religion is true. Everything. Even Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Like why Allah he is saying to present himself in three, in three names? I challenge you to tell me. Hold on. I can answer this question after I eat some grape. Give me grape. Give me grape. You know? Yeah, grape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grape. Mashallah. I mean, somebody sent me this video. I don't, I don't watch those kids, but I could not believe it how stupid this guy is. I mean, he is speaking supposedly, and, and and did you see even the jacket he's wearing? I thought this guy is coming from the circus. What's wrong with those people?
Do we have any Abdul? Uh, we have somebody calling me, but he doesn't sound like a Muslim. I can make you a Muhammadan? Ah, he's a Muslim. Okay, he want to make me a Muhammadan. Okay. Let us see how he will make me a Muhammadan. I will mute this, the speaker until, the, until he answer, so it doesn't bother you. When he answer, we make it... Uh, Hello? Hello? Yes, uh, you said you want to make me Muhammadan? Yes. Okay, so you are a Muslim? I, I've become a Muhammadan. Uh, you become Muhammadan. So what do you used to be? I'm a Christian as well. You know... Um... Oh, you are a Christian and Muhammadan at the same time? Yeah, you know uh, how many you, you know how many times that uh, Muhammad is written in the Quran. This, yeah? isn't, this isn't a question. I'm asking you how you are a Christian and Muhammad at the same time. That is because Muhammad means Jesus. Ah, Muhammad being Jesus. How is that? Go ahead. Yes, um, actually, Muhammad. Do you know what it means? It means the praised one. Mm -hmm. mm. And? and the praised one in the Quran mm -hmm. is actually Jesus. Oh, okay. Hmm. You know, it's but, but, all, but all of the is, Quran my friend, is, my is, my is my, from, my, from Christian sources. My friend, my friend. And, uh, I, I understand hmm. what you are trying to say, uh, hmm. but this is not a legitimate way to prove any point, and I will tell you why. For the Muslims, Muhammad is a person. He is not the same as Jesus, correct? That is... That is true and not true because they don't believe really in Jesus. They believe in Isa. No, no, no. Uh, no, who is, problem, no, who is problem. Not Jesus. no problem. But this is a different person, right? It is, it is kind of a different person it's, because no that person different. is. Is Muhammad, is, 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 build, Muhammad is, is, a, is Muhammad the son? Um, is Muhammad the son of Mary? Muhammad is the son of Mary because Jesus is the son of Mary. Ah, uh, okay. Well, my friend, I don't have time to waste. Sorry. This is just a trolling. We don't have time for kids talk. It's an insult, actually, to say that Muhammad and Jesus are the same person. I saw some people, they are making silly videos about this, but this is really stupid. Uh, Muhammad simply, he, was, he is trying to replace Jesus by himself. He is the devil. So, this is why he said, one of my name is Al-Mahi. What Al-Mahi mean? The eraser. So he have a mission is to erase all the teaching of the previous prophet of the Jews and Christianity. His name is the eraser. So he said, I am Muhammad. I am Ahmed. I am Al-Mahi. The Muslim they fabricate uh, my translation. So Muhammad he made it clear that obviously the name Muhammad is not even his name. That's why he cannot be Muhammad and Ahmad in the same time. You know, the, the name is a name, but you can use similar name if it is close to the meaning, for this is a title. So obviously none of those is a name. And he claimed that he have five names, uh, and one of them is Al Mahi. He is the one who erase, erase what? Erase Christianity and Judaism. And as you see, and actually, this is a clear proof uh, that Muhammad is a fraud. Why? Uh, because he did not erase Kufr; he practiced Kufr. He practiced kufr. He practiced paganism. When a man, he says, if you are touching a black stone, that erase your sin. How Muhammad, he erase pagan practice, if he is saying, by touching a stone, it erase your sin.
Okay, we have our brother Sam Shamoon calling. Hello? Present. Brother, sorry to bother you. Brother, no I know you're right. No problem. How are you doing? Praise Jesus Christ for you, brother. I always praise God for you. I tell people we need to do your approach, and I mean that. <clears throat> your approach is the only approach that works with Muslims. So um, I only want to share this with you. Maybe you can comment on it so to see what these uh, pastors are doing. I, I did a session, but I want you to do one. You're more qualified. A pastor this Friday came to Yasser Qadi's mosque. I gave you the link right there. It's short. Right. If you go through it, it's, you're going to be disgusted with this pastor. But he claims to be a Baptist pastor. Mm. He is having a big event tomorrow at his church where Muslims are going to come. They're going to have Muslim fairs. He even has a room for them to pray in the mosque. He's going to bring all these big-name Muslims. Mm. And he claims to be a Baptist who loves Jesus Christ. Okay. And final thing, brother, if you can help the people understand... It's become popular now, as you mentioned, the Christian brothers are saying that the original Muhammad was a title praised one because the original Quran was Syriac and it was hymns about Jesus. He's the praised one. So maybe you can educate the people why we shouldn't follow that approach. So brother, I love you. Pray for me and God use you mightily and give you perfect health and keep doing what you're doing. You are a legend in my book, man. I love you. Thank Take you. Beer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bye bye. Yeah, well, we have many, many antichrist people who they claim to be Christians. That's why the Bible speak about, you know, there's false teachers. The Bible says clearly, who is the Antichrist? Is the one who denied the Son, that Jesus is, you know, the Son. Right? So, whoever this idiot is, he is one of many idiots. I can show you from the Catholic Church, people doing that too. I can show you from the Orthodox Church, people doing that too. So we have a scam and fraud everywhere. This is why not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. This is why he said, be aware of false teachers. And Muslims, Muhammadan, you know, Satan, he want to give them a hand. So he sent someone, he claimed to be a Christian minister. And now the Christian, they will say, he's a minister, he's a Christian. This is why we have to expose those people. But this is, exists almost in every single church. There's many fabricators and many liars. The Lord, he says, from their fruits, you shall know them. Not from the name of a church or their names. Right? Never recognize people by names. Recognize them by the fruit. Uh, okay, too much, too much. Why you don't call me and show me the mistake in the Bible so we can we can laugh at your prophet? Can you do that? As long as you discover a mistake in the Bible. I have a proposal for you. Can you call me and tell me the mistake? And I assure you, I will be thy laughing at your prophet. Remember. You are going to show me a mistake from the Bible. But I will be laughing at your prophet. How that work? You will see. Can you call me? Do you dare? Or you are just a text Abdul? Aren't you the same one who spoke about balls? Okay, I'm going to use your language. Do you have balls to call me? Or already they are boiling in the water like eggs. <clears throat> Any Abdul? Yeah. Again, don't let those people affect your faith. Those priests, ministers, you know, many of them, they are perfectly correct. The same as the Pope. The Pope, he said, kiss the Quran. But other Pope, he said, Muhammad brought nothing but evil. So there is people who they are in a position, in a high position, and they are not telling the truth. They are fake, they are false, they are false teachers.
you are with your family outside. Oh, okay. Well, I want to keep you and stay with your family, so I'm going to block you. I have no time for kids. This is why we always we say carefully. Listen, don't follow a person. Don't follow any person. We follow only the Bible. I do commit sin, you do commit sin, I do wrong, you do wrong. So why do you want to follow me? You follow the one who is pure. You follow the one who never change. You follow the one who is his teaching is solid and so clear. So anyone who denied the father or he denied the son, he's an antichrist. Doesn't matter who. So if I go to somebody and I say to him and he claim to be Christian, oh, Muhammad is really a prophet, but okay, but the Bible says the one who denied the son, Jesus that the son, is antichrist. See, there's, there's many verses in the Bible, they are there to expose those liars. Right? And how many times Jesus says, I am, and my father, and the son? How many times he says, I am the living God? How many times he says, I am the way, and there is no other way? There's no other way. So what this guy is trying to do, he's trying to make Muhammad the way, the guy who beat women, who raped children. A child molester, a thief, a criminal, a cheater. I mean, name one thing Muhammad did is not against the Ten Commandments. Even the devil did not do what Muhammad did. Mr. Seven Star, I take calls from Muslims. Are you a Muslim? And you will find many city people like this guy who call me. He says Muhammad is the same as Jesus in the Bible. He is uh, the praised one. So now if we call a, a dog the praised one, that will make him God? This is how stupid people are. God is not a title. Otherwise, I can give the title to myself, and you can give it to yourself. You can call your computer the praised one. <laughs> so human being is very silly and very stupid. And uh, you will find how, how much immature people they are exist. And they have a big mouth. Very huge mouth. Do we have any Mohammedan? And you know, for the sake of argument, let us say Muhammad, he changed his name, and he called himself Christ. Still he's not. Isn't Jesus, he said, there's many, they will come after, they will say, Christ appear here, Christ appear there. Don't listen to them. Almost every year we hear there's somebody claiming to be the Christ, the Messiah. Well, we receive it, Mr. Seven Star. Thank you very much. No problem. Do we have any brave Mohammedan there to call us, especially if you are a sheikh? Is it true that Muhammad, before he became a prophet, was a nice person? And no, this is not true. Do you remember the story? You see, the Muslim, there is something very, uh, they repeat, they say, as sadiqul Amin. As-Sadiq al -amin. Every Muslim will say that to you. As-Sadiq mean the honest. al amin the trustworthy. Was Muhammad honest and he was a trustworthy? Do you know the story where Muhammad, he went to his own son, wife, when the husband was away? And what he did? He flirted with the wife. He flirted with the wife. Is that a trustworthy person? He go when the husband, forget that he is his son. Most of them, they will say he is son by adoption, so what? 
It doesn't matter, even if it's my friend. This is against the Ten Command of God. This is a woman, she is a wife of somebody else. And then Muhammad and they claim that the Prophet of Allah, he have a privilege. And what is the privilege? If his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her. This is Tafsir al-Qurtubi, very number 14, page number 212. And we can use Google translation, even though you guys, you don't know Arabic, but Google will do that. You know, I mean, it's not a perfect translation, but will work. You will find that all the privilege of Muhammad is either about his penis or his pocket. He have the best of the booty. He have the fifth of the booty. He can sleep with women without paying them their, their wages for free. And then you will see here, number 10, it says, إِذَا وَقَعَ بَصَرَهُ عَلَى إِمْرَأَ وَجَبَ عَلَى زَوْجِهَا طَلَاقُهَا وَحَلَّ لَهُ نِكَاحَهَا Let us translate. Go to translation in front of your eyes. Let us go to number 10. Number 10. This is number 9. And you will see all of them is about sex, 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 money, 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 money. He can sleep with women without paying them. He can have sex even when he is around the Kaaba. He can have anything. All, all is about privilege of sex. And then, if his eyes, if his sight falls on a woman, her husband must divorce her. So her husband, he have to divorce her. So the prophet can if her. You see, they are translating the word nikah as marriage. What kind of a privilege given to Muhammad? If his eyes fall onto your wife, and he like her, he's, here he says, if his sight fail, which means not every woman, you know, Muhammad, he see, he want to F. He meant here, if his eyes falls, which means he fall for her, he like her. And, you know, if he saw your wife, this is why the women, they used to be hidden from Muhammad, the decent women. Isn't it clear that this guy is a fraud and a scam? What kind of a prophet? He have such a privilege. Is that a privilege, really? <laughs> when, when somebody says, uh, that there is a God, and this God, he cared for his prophet. Okay. How he cared for him? Well, he gave him a privilege to F everybody. Are you serious? Yes. Here we go. Chapter 33, verse number 50. All those things is a privilege to the prophet. He can F everybody. Especially... Uh, Immigrant women, she want to give her vagina to the Prophet so he can if her. As he wishes. Ask yourself, if Muhammad and they claim that Moses is the same God of Moses, why God of Moses did not give Moses such a privilege or any other Prophet? Hmm? Why? And what does this have to do with God? How that serve God? How that serve the message of worshiping Allah? Any Muhammadan can inform us how that serve? What do you think?
a person he was sent by Allah to promote a religion it's called Islam and you worship Allah and you kill for his sake etc but then you find yourself that this person he is above Allah obviously he used Allah as a proxy as a way to control the, 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 the man by saying what God told me so nobody would do it. Who, who can discuss this with him? That's it. Allah said, who, who can discuss? It's not a man saying now. And then he claimed that whatever Muhammad he gave you, you have to obey. So Muhammad, he replaced Allah on earth. Do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? Nobody? So you Muslim agree, that's it? That's good. Look like the Muhammadan, they agree. And as we heard the one who called us before, he said that Muhammad, he took from the Jews and he did motivation. He's not taking his religion from God. Some from the Arab, pagan Arab, black stone kissers. Some from Hindus, which is the black stone too. The the god of fertility. Mm. Anyone? Let us look at uh, yeah, I don't see any movement in Skype. Don't text me, please. Don't text me in Skype. If you are a Christian, I will block you. I'm just telling you. I use a Skype to speak to Muhammadan. Black stone kissers. Are you a black stone kisser? Anyone? Who is a Muslim can show us one useful thing from this so-called religion? Just one useful thing. If there's anything is useful. Additional that you you know you have to give your wife to the prophet so he can sleep with her, which is very useful, by the way. I mean, you don't need to do the job. Here we go. The prophet is helping. The prophet is a very amazing person. He likes to help people in the bedroom. Not everyone would do that. Only true prophet of God. And his name is Muhammad. Right? Any Muhammadan? 
ميدي 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 أني محمدا So this is the video uh, uh, we, we received from this guy who he claimed to be a, a Christian minister. I don't know what they are saying there, but I will hear a little bit of it, so just for a laugh. Honest, so I'm nervous and I'm wondering, did the governor explain to this man who I am? I don't want him to find out he's with a Baptist pastor and then he kills me or something. So I said, did they explain? He said, he said, he said, yes. I said, so, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a humanitarian. Yes, you humanitarian. And you know, I'm a Christian. He said, yes, you Christian, you American, you Christian American. So what is that now? I mean, obviously this guy is a stupid idiot. Uh, you know, some people, they try to find a publicity and uh, supposedly they claim that they are bringing Christ to those Mohammedan. But we knew how the propaganda work. Those people, they are very well trained to attack Christianity. And the guy who is there, obviously he is a fraud, and they will use him to enter into a church. So now he said, and he is talking, telling stories like, like a storyteller in the old days in the Middle East. But is he telling them anything truthful about Jesus? No. This is why nobody's upset from him. <laughs> about him, I'm about to read my third biography about him. I just think, here's the problem, guys. 2.2 hmm. billion Christians, 1.8 billion Muslims. If we don't get along, the world is in a mess. Uh, we have to get along. This is the point, guys. If we don't get along, the world in a mess. <laughs> I'm not going to watch the rest. Obviously, he's a donkey. Uh, my friend, when somebody, he come to you and he speaks such a language, getting along have nothing to do with sharing the truth. So are you saying to me, oh, my screen was black, sorry. Anyway, anyway there's nothing really to, to see. Are you saying to me that getting along will happen only if we become hypocrite to each other? Is that how we will become, how, how we will get along? We are going to get along by bringing Muslims to our churches and they tell us that Jesus is not God? That will how we can get along? What does that mean? Be aware of false people. Do we have any Muhammadan? Yeah, well, he is, you know, he, he heard from, from somebody, they are 1.8. Just wait until next week, they are 2 billions. No, we will not share such a link because we don't want to promote liars. This is a mistake Christians, they do. They go around and they promote Muslim website and Muslim links. And this is what the Christian they do. They don't post our videos around, they post Muslim videos around. Actually, number one promoter for Muslim videos and channels are Christians. As an example, David Wood. I'm not against him, but this guy, he is a professional to promote Islamic YouTubers who nobody listen to them. Mimi Hijab was a street boy, nobody listened to him. Always wearing his pink shirt, showing his nipples. David Wood, he volunteer. <laughs> Same as this uh, Sheikh Othman. The guy he was talking to me, who jumped there, David Wood. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so we have a problem that we have a Christians who obviously they do not know what they are doing, and they are obviously not good in debating. They can do great videos and short videos, but in debate they don't have a skills. So if you are a Muhammad and you like to be famous, go to David Wood. He will make you famous. I'm telling you, he will make you famous. Advice.
who was listening to this guy, uh, Mimi Hijab? Who is he? Nobody. This is stupid. He don't even know anything about his religion. Isn't this the same guy who said, not a single Jew, not a single Jew, believe that God has a son, not a single Jew. But isn't it the Quran says that the Jews believe that Uzair is a son of Allah? But he's taking advantage that the person in front of him, he is not qualified in any way of debate. So you get him busted right away. Elijah means God with us. And you do not know Hebrew, you do not know Arabic. And I know this is coming. Somebody saying, no need to bash, we are not bashing, get out of here. We don't bash. This is not bashing. There's people who they can debate, and there's people they have no qualification of debate. I am not a person who say things behind the back of people. You can go and tell him, and he knew. He is not good in debating. Okay, name for me one debate. He's did, he did good in it. Just one. You will tell me this guy with his name, this guy mentally ill, the one who have high school, the one who arrested many times for beating his wife. I forgot his name. This guy is a kid. He does not know anything about Islam. This is why they are lined up to debate with the Christians, but not with me. Did you ask yourself that Mimi Hijab, when he promised the Muslim to debate me, he hang up, he played for a video. Did you say that? Hang up on him. Did you say, because he's afraid if we talk, if we have a debate. He was terrified, intimidated. He have seven Muslims around. And he put the speakers far away from his microphone, hoping that nobody will hear what I'm saying. It's a fact, my friend. They always there. Do this guy, Yasser Qadi, dare to speak to me? Do he dare? So we help Muslim website, and we are the one who make them get bigger. Any Abdul right now, he wanna have a 500,000 subscriber, he go to David Wood. He go to this guy, his name, uh, what his name, the guy, uh, Mimi Hijab invited him for interview. The one we play him in his, uh, uh, no, actually not this one, Jefferson, Batterson, I don't know what his name. Canadian he is, I don't know. Yeah, foolish behavior. There's no debate. There's no real debate. So we promote Muslims. In the same time, we don't put Islam in its place. If you are a person who knows the cult very well, they will avoid you. They will not even keep close to you. This is why they keep saying to you, we will debate face to face, face to face, but they debate everybody over the internet, except me. How many Muhammadan he keeps saying, we debate you face to face? <coughs> face to face. <laughs> yeah, Jordan Patterson. Hmm. Let us see, maybe we have a Mohammedan. All of them, they share one thing. They want to debate me face to face. Hello? I'm fine, my friend. You are a Muslim? You okay, yeah. Are you a Muslim? Me, to be honest with you, I'm an ex-Muslim. Oh, you're an ex-Muslim, okay. Yeah, but I was trying to find your... Basically, I was trying to find your Skype for a long time, yeah? All right. What? This is like months and months, so yeah? So why, uh, why you left Islam, my friend? The, basically, the reason why I left Islam, yeah, is due if you, it was uh, through miracle, basically. It was nothing to do with people preaching to me. Or, All right. Like, you know, a lot of Muslims, when I explain my situation, how I left Islam, they say to me, it's basically, basically I was deceived by Satan. Mm. So now, did you become a Christian or not yet? No, I left Islam like uh, two years ago now. All right. And what, what do you think about Christianity, about Christ? To be honest with you, yeah, 
I've, I, I would say yeah, it's the best thing that's ever happened to my life. And I just wish for the same thing for, I just hope the Muslim will do more research and uh, though maybe they might come to conclusion. Basically, the reason why I'm calling today is basically my wife, she's still Muslim and she, the moment she found out became Christian, she, and then she said, I don't want to have nothing to do with you no more. And then, uh, but I tell her to study Islam, to study your religion. The reason why I'm telling her to study this is because I know she would realize how much nonsense it is, how much like so many things doesn't make sense. But every time I try to tell her about Christianity, she doesn't want to listen to it. She just keeps telling me that I don't want to hear it. Why you don't uh, call her, let her talk to me? Yeah, but the thing is, she said like, if, even when I said to, even when I want to talk to her, she's told me, don't talk to me about this. I'm not, I'm not a scholar, I'm not educated in Islam. Mm -hmm. I said to her, but you don't, you don't need to be a scholar and educated. You just need to, you just need common sense. You have common sense. And when you study Islam, you realize a lot of things doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, uh, my but, friend, if, uh, if you need my help, I will be happy to help you. You can call me when she is there, if you want. Yeah. And I will be happy to speak to her. But we cannot force a person to speak to me, correct? I mean, we cannot force people to Yeah, listen. 100%. Yeah. So but if, while, if she, while if she speaking, decide one day. I would be happy to. Hear. What, what I was thinking is maybe I speak to you, and uh, so she can hear everything you're saying while I speak to you, and then is she, I can is just she, have. Is she listening now? No, she's not listening now. Basically, now I live in a different city, and she lives in another. She lives in London, basically. Mm. Well, maybe next time you yeah. can you can uh, when she is there, or you know, you join a conversation in Skype. You can call me when yeah. live, and I would be happy to talk to, to you and her. Okay, then. I will, I will be very nice and friendly with her, I promise you. Yeah, 100%. Just remind me, because, you know, for me, I, I have uh, tens of thousands of people in Skype texting me, and I have no idea, no idea who are they. So just remind yeah. me, you know, because okay, you, no you, you might think that I will remember you right away. That's really impossible. Do to no, I'll definitely remember. remind you, definitely remind All you. Right, my I spoke to you a long time ago when I left Islam. I was kind of nervous. It was my first time talking to you. I was so nervous. All right. But uh, <laughs> I don't feel like that anymore. Okay, see, this is why I just told you I don't remember. Yeah, this is why yeah. I don't remember, you know, because I, all, all what I see here, names, I mean, nicknames, whatever. And uh, mm. then a uh, second person called. I mean, uh, um, you know, it's a Skype. Yeah. yeah, but Christianity, for all the Muslims that are listening, I know there's like a thousand people listening. Christianity is so beautiful. It gave me the peace. Basically, I was going through a lot of depression, and I just I had no way out. And I thought there's there's no there's no way out. Just like I lost hope, and I thought the only way out is by me just dying. That's the only way out. And I never thought in, in a million years yeah there was hope, and there was a way out. And it's only when I became Christian I realized that there is a, there was there, there was hope still, and that Jesus was the way out. And uh, as a Muslim. Basically, I was going through a lot of depression and I just put my hands up and I said, Allah, show me the way out. Then the true God heard my prayer, which is Jesus Christ here. Yeah, he heard my prayer from heaven and he answered my prayer. He showed me that he's the way out. I mean to that. Really? Amen. Yeah. Very so nice. since then, I just start having feeling, I start having, having peace in my life, the peace that I never had in my life before. And that's why like, I, have, I have two doors, my doors, one eight one is only two years old and I and I was kind of heartbroken when I, and when I realized that I had to decide who to to follow if, if to whether to uh, follow to be still like stick to my wife or follow Jesus and I made a decision I have to follow God I mean to that. and I was going through emotional feeling like I was having emotional like from time to time I would cry just knowing that I can't be with them no more so my my the only my dream is to just like to have my wife to believe in Christ, so we can all be like reconciled back to each other again. Well, my friend, let us pray. But for the only way we can pray to the Lord. I thought the only way is maybe. Huh? Let us pray to the Lord that He will uh, help your wife to listen at least to me, and to listen yeah. to the truth, and the truth will set her free. So pray, you know, never give yeah. up. You know, never give up. Amen. And. Uh, yeah. You see, there's many people, they speak to me. There's a guy, I don't know if you know, you you, you always listen to me. There's a guy, his name is Jihad. Mm. He keep calling me for yeah. the last three years. Last time he spoke to yeah. me, if you, I don't know if, how many of you remember. Jihad called me after three years. He called me names. He got upset from me. 
He is a, uh, he's an Arab, he is a Muslim, he is a Palestinian, and he always defend Islam. After three years, he admitted yeah. that Islam is bad. He did not dare to say mm. I'm out, but he said that already, live on air. Uh, mm. So never give up. Three years, the guy he yeah. told me. Three years, he say I am lying. Three years, he says you are mm. wrong. And then after three years, he give up mm. because in his heart, he is just fighting the truth. Yeah. So never yeah. give up, my friend. Never give up. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, my friend. You're right about that. And uh, basically, I had a vision. Basically, five years before I left, uh, five years before I became Christian, I had a vision of Jesus Christ. It was basically he was sitting in a temple, and he was preaching to all these followers. And the moment I went and sat down, something just told me to leave. So I left straight away. It's only five years later. I was thinking about that dream here, and I realized why well, I was told to leave because at that moment I was not a follower of Christ. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I had this basically. I had this severe heart problem in my heart and then i met this christian guy he introduced me to a to an ex-muslim and this ex-muslim the first thing he said to me do you have any problem with your like do you have any pains in your body i said i've been like suffering from this heart problem for almost three months and he prayed for me a week later i saw him then another miracle happened i don't want to explain it to you maybe you don't have no time maybe so maybe next time i'll just tell you the full details but it was basically through miracles I gave my life to Christ. I mean, my friend. Well, the, yeah. uh, everything is possible with Christ, and He is the one who gives life. He is the one who makes yeah. the blind see. And uh, you know, if uh, the 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 Lord He says your faith has healed you, you know. So yeah, amen, amen. It's your faith, my friend, and your faith will work. And the Lord He listened to those who they are very faithful. Sometimes people they ask for help. But they yeah. have a doubt inside them, and that's why the help yeah. is not going to work. You know, maybe he sounds like a yeah. believer. He sounds like he is desperate. You know, like he is so strong in belief, but in his heart there yeah. is a weakness, and this is why. Yeah, the faith is the the, the faith is very powerful and can heal you. Yeah. So, my friend, thank you for yeah. coming. We pray that your wife she will listen, and I'm be I will be yeah. happy to take Amen. her anytime. Just one last thing. One one to, last thing I want to say. I won't be long. Just one last thing. So one time, basically, we was in a living room, and my wife was there, my aunties, my sisters, everyone was there, and my mom, she had basically this problem in her back, and it was poking or something with her, and really bad. And she used to always tell me about it, and she used to always tell me to massage it. So I never used to massage it, but one day, when I became Christian, I said, I was just sitting next to her, I was just rubbing her back. She said, yeah, that, that area is hurting me, please massage it. And then everyone was there, so just watching me. So I, so I said to her, don't worry, I'm not going to massage you. I'll just pray for you. And then when I prayed for her, she felt the pain leaving her. And it was constant, like the immediate, the pain left. And then she was so surprised. She, would, she took my hand, she was looking at my hand. She was saying, what did you do? <laughs> she thought I had something on my hand. Mm -hmm. And she was immediately healed at that moment. And she was saying, well, you know how Muslim always, they say, well, like when something happened to them. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes they don't, no one believes them unless they say, well, so she was saying, well, I'm healed. And she said, oh, I don't know what you've done. But I never told her what, I never told her at that moment I was Christian. Well, you and she found her. out a few months later. You should tell her. She found out two, few, no, she found out already after that. Okay. Well, yeah. Our friend. Uh, but it was nice talking to you anyway. Yeah, you all will come. I'm happy to have you here. And I hope soon we will, we will hear from your wife and she will leave this cult. All right. Amen. God Take bless care. you, brother. Nice you. talking to you. Take care. Yeah, this is the difficult thing. If you are married or you are going to marry from someone who don't believe. So in this case here, he is a Muslim by birth and she is a Muslim. So the difficulty come when both they don't agree about who they believe in. But a Christian person, he shall not, a man or a woman, should not marry a non-believer. That is against even the Bible teaching. Darkness and light cannot be in one room. Cannot. When the light come, darkness go. Uh, 
There's many people, they, they, you know, they just follow their emotion and they marry someone who is not from their belief. And then what will happen, your children will pay the price. Because they will be confused. One saying to them, well, Christ is our Lord. The other one saying, no, those Christians are going to go to hell. Don't follow them. So the child will really suffer a lot. And you, you will suffer yourself. Why do you want to do that yourself? You want to marry, marry a Christian woman. You want to marry, marry a Christian man, if you are a Christian. You know? There's, there's billions of people. You cannot find a man to marry except a Muslim man who believes that he can beat you. I mean, how naive you are. Maybe how desperate you are to get married, maybe. Do anything. Uh... All right, I think we have enough for today. It was a good call today, and we have a nice conversation with some people. But I want you to be careful. There's many, they claim to be Christian, ministers, priests, bishops, pope, it doesn't matter. Christian, or Protestant, Orthodox, Catholic, doesn't matter. But many, they will try to fool you, try to make you accept Muhammad. And the reason they claim, as we heard this guy, that we have to get along. We, we are not the one not getting along with the Muslims. This guy is being a hypocrite. It's not us who is going after a Muslim, says to him, convert or we will kill you. Muslims, they can open their mosque, they can pray, they can practice their religion. And we don't go after them. It is the Muslims. So what this guy is talking about he is just an idiot. It is the Muslim who forbid us from carrying the Bible. It is the Muslims who killed someone, left Islam to become anything else. Christian or atheist or a Hindu or a Buddha. So when you say we have to get along, what does that mean? This is what happened when you put a donkey in the stage. Don't allow them to be there. Don't join their churches. A person like this, nobody should go to his church. For this is not a church of God no more. This is the synagogue of Satan. Synagogue of Satan is any place where people, they don't share the truth. They fear the word. And they do politics. You see, when we speak as an example against Putin, war, I'm not doing politics. I'm speaking against invading a Christian country. I'm worried about those women and children and those people who will lose their houses. That doesn't mean that Putin is the only evil. We're in America, we have more evil too. Same as in England, same as in France, same as, same as, same as. But we don't take a side of any. The one who is a criminal, we say is a criminal. The second you start taking a side, then you are no Christian no more. Yesterday, one of you asked about discrimination, racism. People are hypocrite. All mankind are racist. All mankind. And this is why we have borders. This is why we have countries. <laughs> if we are not racist, we should have open borders. Now, somebody might say, oh, Christian Prince is promoting globalism. No, my friend. But the idea of racism is embedded inside you. You belong to a family. The family belongs to a tribe. The tribe belongs to a nation. When one of your family get attacked, you sponsor your family. It's very simple. Those are your race. Those are your people. But the ugly can happen, which means there is a normal thing and there is ugly stuff. The ugly thing is you discriminate someone, not because he is bad, not because he did harm to you, not because he is a, a thief, a criminal, no, just because he is a, from different family or different color or different language or he don't look like you. That is the ugly part. Otherwise, race, race, which is where the word racism coming from, is something embedded in the society. Everything around us is based on race. European Union, well, what is that? European Union, okay. Well, this is racism, but not necessarily ugly. People, they are from the same family, they are joined together. African Union, 
this is racism, but not ugly, not necessarily, unless they want to invade somebody from different race to kill him, just because of the race issue. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the China, the Chinese, they believe they are, they, even though there is many ethnic inside the China, but they, they call it China, the Chinese. So people, they sometimes they lie to themselves and they claim that they are not racist, but in reality, they are, but the Bible is the only solution. There's no free, there is no slave, there's no Hebrew, there's no Greek. The free and the slave in the time of Jesus was who? There was a black slave, there was a white slave, there was a Ethiopian slave, there was a Sudanese slave, there's from the middle of Africa slave, and there is even white people slave. So there's no free, there's no slave. There's no Greek, there's no Hebrew. Nationality and ethnic disappear with Christ. It makes us a family. So for me, when I look at a person, I look at the fruits. The Lord, he says, from their fruits, you shall know them, not from their names. You can call yourself whatever you want. You can be black, you can be white, you can be Asian, but who cares really? What we care is how good you are. Or how bad you are. I met all kinds of people. I have a woman across the street from me. I consider her the same as my mother. She is over almost 90 years old. I check on her. I, I'm not telling you like I'm doing good deed, but she is a black woman and I really love this woman. Once she saw my grass is not cut for some time, she called the police to check on me. She cannot even come to, to, to by herself. She can, how did she can walk? So, you know, I have once a neighbor, a black guy. I left and looked like my garage door did not close. I came back after two hours. I found him sitting. He had his chair in front of my driveway. I told him, what are you doing here? He said, well, you left your garage open. I was afraid somebody would get in. I said, well, there is a bomb, just push it behind the door. He said, I was afraid to get in. Somebody would say he got in. So he sat in the front of my house. He brought his chair, guarding my door until I come back home. So there is there's white people who they are thieves. There is a black people who they are thieves. There is a Ch Asian, a Chinese, whatever. But there is wonderful people from all. But when we are racist, we remember only the bad ones. We see only the bad ones. And actually, me, myself, I faced a lot of uh, problems since 9-11 because I'm an Arab. I go in the airplane, they treat me differently. They check me differently. You know, you are under watch. You know that you are under watch, even though I'm not a Muslim, just because I'm Middle Eastern, I'm an Arab. You speak in Arabic, people get alarmed. I don't blame them. And here we need to understand that if there is something wrong happened done by your nation or your people, don't, don't be upset. Understand the same what happened to me. When I go in an airplane, I have to have a special check. Everybody go normally except you. They have to check my bags. They have to check everything. They have, I mean, very carefully. And then, which is something I like, by the way, they give me an, a window seat so I cannot move, you know? If you go to the, 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 the bathroom, you will see somebody is standing there. I go in the bathroom. I get out. The lady is still waiting there, watching what he's doing. Are you still there? Are you okay, sir? Like, what the heck? Let me finish it. I was discussing politics with Allah, and now she is behind the bathroom seat door, and she want to be sure that I'm not going to do something wrong. I'm not stupid. I know that she is watching. They, are, you know, they knew who is a Middle Eastern in the airplane. So here we go. You can say I got discriminated, but I don't blame them. Do I blame them really to watch everybody who's an Arab after 9-11? No, I don't. It's not their fault. Because before 9-11, they never did that. So, 
we have to be intelligent and we have to be smart and uh, you know we have to be uh, learning from prophet muhammad that the fly have medicine in the right wing and uh, disease in the left wing so when you go in the airplane and you feel like you are discriminated well think about it the airplane have two wings one have medicine and the other one have medi have uh, have disease so my friend Try to find which one of the airplane wings is the one have medicine and get close to it. <laughs> Unbelievable. I know it's not a good thing to show you a fly, but remember, Muhammad is a doctor and he is the one who discovered that the fly have a medicine in one wing and illness, disease in the other wing. And this is what is called the wing medicine how prophet muhammad knew this unless he is a prophet of allah unless he's a prophet of god a person who is literate he did not go to school like you how he knew that he's genius he's not hilarious he is genius this is what they say to you in islamic tv station however anyone who have little brain he will die laughing at what they say even a fly if, if the fly she knew what the Muhammadan think about her, she will flip and she will be laughing her ass. Imagine if the fly, they can read Al-Bukhari. The fly, she will be reading like this. Imagine if a fly can go and make a video in YouTube and she confirmed what the prophet said. The Muslims will go crazy. Imagine if we can give this fly a microphone. And uh, you remember I asked the guy, I said to him, would your prophet here receive Quran as a sound of a bell? The Quran prince, you want to fix the, the, the hadith, right? Okay. Is the hadith, the unproven hadith, the prophet here received the Quran as a sound of a bell. How the Quran became in Arabic? The only one can understand that is the fly. Fly is the way. And for now, I will let you fly, but in a good way. Thank you all for being here. I hope we have a good time together. And we pray for those who they are listening to see the truth, and the truth will set them free. And remember, don't promote false teachers. Don't. Don't share Muslim videos around. Don't share even a Christian videos, which is promoting stupid Islamic channels. Don't, for you are not doing a good service. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And this is your brother, Christian Prince, humbly was serving you for today. And watch, after I say bye and goodbye, you will see the Muslims suddenly in the chat room challenging me to debate me. And later they will say, Christian Prince, he run away. Take beer. Okay, I'm going to go and take a beer and let us see if the Muslims can refute me by talking to themselves, but not by talking to me because they fear the truth. Thank you. God bless you. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan 
urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 